the farm next to ours is owned by Mr. and Mrs. Greg. The Greggs have two children, both of them boys. Their names are Philip and William. Sometimes I go over to their farm to play with them. I am a girl and I'm eight years old. Philip is also eight years old. William is three years older. He's ten. <clears throat> what? Oh, all right then. He's eleven. Last week, something very funny happened to the Greg family. I'm going to tell you about it as best I can. Now, the one thing that Mr Greg and his two boys loved to do more than anything else was to go hunting. Every Saturday morning, they would take their guns and go off into the woods and look for animals and birds to shoot. Even Philip, who was only eight years old, had a gun of his own. I just can't stand hunting. I just can't stand it. It doesn't seem right to me that people should kill animals just for the fun that they get out of it. So, I used to try to stop Philip and William from doing it. Every time I went over to their farm, I would do my best to talk them out of it. But they only laughed at me. I even said something about it once to Mr Greg, but he just walked on past me as if I weren't there. Then, one Saturday morning, I saw Philip and William coming out of the woods with their father, and they were carrying a lovely young deer. This made me so cross, I started shouting at them. The boys laughed and made faces at me, and Mr Greg told me to go home and mind my own P's and Q's. Well, that did it. I saw red. And before I was able to stop myself, I did something I never meant to do. I put the magic finger on them all! Oh dear, oh dear, I even put it on Mrs Greg who wasn't there. I put it on the whole Greg family. For months, I'd been telling myself that I'd never put the magic finger upon anyone again. Not after what happened to my teacher, Mrs Winter. Poor Mrs Winter. One day, we were in class and she was teaching us spelling. Stand up and spell cat. That's an easy one, I said. K-A-T. You are a stupid little girl, Mrs Winter said. I'm not a stupid little girl. I'm a very nice little girl. Go and stand in the corner. Then I got cross and I saw red and I put the <laughs> finger on Mrs Winter good and strong and almost at once. Guess what? Whiskers began growing out of her face. They were long black whiskers, just like the ones you see on a cat, only much bigger and how fast they grew. Before we had time to think, they were out to her ears. Of course, the whole class started screaming with laughter. <laughs> and Mrs Winter said, Would you be so kind as to tell me what you find so funny? All of you! And when she turned around to write something on the blackboard, we saw she'd grown a tail as well. <laughs> it was a huge bushy tail. I cannot begin to tell you what happened after that. But if any of you are wondering whether Mrs Winter is quite all right again now, the answer is no, and she never will be. The magic finger is something I've been able to do my whole life. I can't tell you how I do it, because I don't even know myself, but it always happens when I get cross, when I see red, then, I get very, very hot all over. Then the tip of my forefinger on my right hand begins to tingle most terribly. 
and suddenly a sort of flash comes out of me. A quick flash, like something electric. It jumps out and touches the person who's made me cross. After that, the magic finger is upon them and things begin to happen. Well, the magic finger was now upon the whole of the Greg family and there was no taking it off again. I ran home to wait for things to happen. They happened fast. I shall now tell you what those things were. I got the whole story from Philip and William the next morning after it was all over. In the afternoon of the very same day that I put the magic finger on the Gregg family, Mr Gregg and Philip and William went out hunting once again. This time, they were going after wild ducks, so they headed towards the lake. In the first hour, they got ten birds. In the next hour, they got another six. <laughs> What a day, cried Mr. Greg. This is the best yet. He was beside himself with joy. <laughs> Just then, four more wild ducks flew over their heads. They were flying very low. They were easy to hit. Bang! Oh. Bang! Oh. Bang! Oh. Bang! Oh. The ducks flew on. We missed. Hmm, that's funny. Then, to everyone's surprise, the four ducks turned around and came flying right back to the guns. Hey! What on earth are they doing? Huh. They're really asking for it this time. He shot at them again. <laughs> so did the boys. <laughs> and again, they all missed. <laughs> Mr. Greg was becoming impatient. Mm, it's the light. It's getting too dark to see. Let's go home. So they started for home, carrying with them the 16 birds that they'd shot before. But the four ducks would not leave them alone. They now began flying around and around the hunters as they walked away. Mr. Greg did not like it one bit. But be off, he cried. And he shot at them many more times. But it was no good. He simply could not hit them. All the way home, those four ducks flew around in the sky above their heads, but nothing would make them go away. Huh. Late that night, after Philip and William had gone to bed, Mr. Greg went outside to get some wood for the fire. He was crossing the yard when all at once he heard the call of a wild duck in the sky. He stopped and looked up. The night was very still. There was a thin yellow moon over the trees on the hill and the sky was filled with stars. Then, Mr. Greg heard the noise of wings flying low over his head and he saw the four ducks, dark against the night sky, flying very close together. They were going around and around the house. Ah! Mr. Greg forgot about the firewood and hurried back indoors. He was now quite afraid. He did not like what was going on, but he said nothing about it to Mrs. Greg. All he said was, Come on, let's go to bed. I feel tired. So they went to bed and to sleep. <laughs> when morning came, Mr. Greg was the first to wake up. He opened his eyes. He was about to put out a hand for his watch to see the time, but his hand wouldn't come out. Hmm, that's funny. He lay still, wondering what was up. Maybe he had hurt that hand in some way. He tried the other hand. That wouldn't come out either. He sat up. <laughs> then, for the first time, he saw what he looked like. Oh! He gave a yell and jumped out of bed. Oh! Mrs. Greg woke up and when she saw Mr. Greg standing there on the floor, she gave a yell too. Oh! 
for he had shrunk and was now tiny. Oh, God. He was maybe oh. as tall as the seat of a chair, but no, 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 no taller. No, 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 no. And where his arms had been, he had a pair of duck's wings instead. Bot, bot, bot! cried Mrs. Greg, going purple in the face. My dear man, what's happened to you? Oh, what's happened to both of us, you mean? shouted Mr. Greg. It was Mrs. Greg's turn now to jump out of the bed. <laughs> she ran to look at herself in the glass, but she wasn't tall enough to see into it. She was even smaller than Mr. Greg. And she too had wings instead of arms. <laughs> Sobbed Mrs. Greg. This is some kind of terrifying magic. And both of them started running around the room, flapping their wings. <laughs> A minute later, Philip and William burst in. <laughs> the same thing had happened to them. They had wings instead of arms, and they were really tiny. They were about as big as robins. Ah, mama, mama, mama! Chirruped Philip. Look, mama, we can fly. And they flew up in the air. Come down at once, said Mrs. Greg. You're much too high. But before she could say another word, Philip and William had flown right out the window. Mr. and Mrs. Greg ran to the window and looked out. The two tiny boys were now high up in the sky. Then Mrs. Greg said to Mr. Greg, Do you think we could do that, my dear? I don't see why not, Mr. Greg said. Come on, let's try. Mr. Greg began flapping his wings hard and all at once up he went. Then Mrs. Greg did the same. So out the window they flew, far up into the sky. And it did not take them long to catch up to Philip and William. Soon, the whole family were flying around and around together. Oh, isn't it lovely? Cried William. I've always wanted to know what it feels like to be a bird. How are your wings feeling, dear? Mr. Greg said to Mrs. Greg. Wonderful. Mrs. Greg said, I could go on forever. Hey, look down there, said Philip. Somebody's walking in our garden. They all looked down, and there below them, in their own garden, they saw four enormous wild ducks. The ducks were as big as human beings. And what's more, they had great long arms like humans, instead of wings. The ducks were walking in a line to the door of the Greg's house swinging their arms and holding their beaks high in the air. Stop! called a tiny Mr. Greg, flying down low over their heads. Uh, go away! That's my house! The ducks looked up and quacked. Quack. The first one put out a hand and opened the door of the house and went in. The others went in after him. The door shut. The Greggs flew down and sat on the wall near the door. Mrs. Greg began to cry. Oh dear, oh dear, she sobbed. They've taken our house. What shall we do? We've no place to go. Then the boys began to cry too. We'll be eaten by cats and foxes in the night, said Philip. I want to sleep in my own bed, said William. Now then, said Mr. Greg. Don't worry. Hmm. I've got an idea. Shall I tell you what we're going to do? What? They said. Mr. Greg looked at them and smiled. We're going to build a nest. A nest? They said. Can we do that? Oh, we must do that. Mrs. Greg said. We've got to have somewhere to sleep. Follow me. They flew off to a tall tree and right at the top of it, Mr. Greg chose the place for the nest. Now we want sticks, he said. Lots and lots of little sticks. 
Off you go, all of you, and find them and bring them back here. How are we supposed to carry the sticks? Said Philip. Hmm. Use your mouths. Mrs Greg and the children flew off. Soon they were back carrying sticks in their mouths. Mr and Mrs Greg took the sticks and started to build the nest. More, he said. I want more and more and more sticks. Keep going. The nest began to grow. Mr Greg was very good at making the sticks stick together and Mrs Greg was very good at finding them. After a while, he said, That's enough sticks! Now I want leaves and feathers and things like that to make the inside nice and soft. The building of the nest went on and on. It took a long time, but at last it was finished. said Mr Greg, hopping back. He was very pleased with his work. Oh, isn't it lovely? cried Mrs Greg, going into it and sitting down. I feel I might lay an egg any moment. The others all got in beside her. How warm it is, said William. And what fun to be living so high up, said Philip. We may be small, but nobody can hurt us up here. But what about food? said Mrs Greg. We haven't had a thing to eat all day. That's right, Mr Greg said. So we will now fly back to the house and go in by an open window and get the tin of biscuits while the ducks aren't looking. Oh, we will be pecked to bits by those dirty great ducks, said Mrs Greg. We shall be very careful, my love, said Mr Greg. And off they went. But when they got to the house, they found all the windows and doors closed. There was no way in. Just look at that beastly duck cooking at the stove, cried Mrs Greg as she flew past the kitchen window. How dare they? And look at that one holding my lovely gun, shouted Mr Greg. One of them's lying in my bed, yelled William, looking into a top window. And one of them's played with my electric crane, cried Philip. Oh dear, oh dear, said Mrs Greg. They have taken over the whole house. We shall never get it back. And what are we going to eat? I will not eat worms, said Philip. I would rather die. Or slugs, said William. Mrs Greg took the two boys under her wings and hugged them. Don't worry. We can mince it all up very fine and you won't even know the difference. Lovely slug burgers. Delicious worm burgers. Oh no! Cried William. Never! Said Philip. Just because we have wings, we don't need to eat bird food. We shall eat apples instead. Our trees are full of them. Come on! So they flew off to an apple tree. But to eat an apple without holding it in your hands, is not at all easy. Every time you try to get your teeth into it, it just pushes away. In the end, they were able to get a few small bites each. And then it began to get dark. So they all flew back to the nest and lay down to sleep. It must have been at about this time that I, back in my own house, picked up the telephone and tried to call Philip. I wanted to see that the family was all right. Hello, I said. Quack, said a voice at the other end. Who is it? I asked. Quack, quack. Philip, is that you? Quack, 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 quack. Oh, um, stop it. Then there came a very funny noise. It sounded like a bird laughing. I put down the telephone quickly. Oh, that magic finger. What has it done to my friends? That night, while Mr and Mrs Greg and Philip and William were trying to get some sleep up in the high nest, a great wind began to blow. 
The tree rocked from side to side and everyone was afraid that the nest would fall down. Then came the rain. It rained and rained and the water ran into the nest and they all got as wet as could be. And oh, it was a bad, bad night. At last, the morning came and with it, the warm sun. Well, said Mrs. Greg, thank goodness that's over. I never want to sleep in another nest again. She got up and looked over the side. Oh, my goodness, she cried. Look, look down there. What is it, my love? said Mr. Greg. He stood up and peeped over the side. He got the surprise of his life. <laughs> On the ground below them stood the four enormous ducks, as tall as fully grown human beings. And three of them were holding guns in their hands. <laughs> One had Mr. Greg's gun, one had Philip's gun, and one had William's gun. The guns were pointing up at the nest. No, no, no! Called out Mr. and Mrs. Greg, both together. Don't shoot! Please don't shoot! Why not? Said one of the ducks. It was the one who wasn't holding a gun. You are always shooting at us. Oh, but it's not the same! said Mr. Greg. We are allowed to shoot ducks. Who allows you? asked the duck. We allow each other, said Mr. Greg. Very nice, said the duck. And now we are going to allow each other to shoot you. I would have loved to see Mr. Greg's face just then. Oh, please, cried Mrs. Greg. Our two children are up here with us. You wouldn't shoot our children. Yesterday you shot my children, said the duck. You shot all six of my children. Well, I'll never do it again. Never, never, never. Do you really mean that? Asked the duck. I do mean it. I'll never shoot another duck as long as I live. That is not good enough, said the duck. What about Dear, I'll do anything you say if you will only put down those guns. Will you give me your word on that? Said the duck. I will, I will. Will you throw away your guns? Asked the duck. I will break them into tiny bits. Said Mr. Greg. And never again need you be afraid of me or my family. Very well. Said the duck. You may now come down. And by the way, may I congratulate you on the nest. For a first effort, it's pretty good. Mr. and Mrs. Greg and Philip and William hopped out of the nest and flew down. Then, all at once, everything went black before their eyes and they couldn't see. At the same time, a funny feeling came over them all and they heard a great wind blowing in their ears. Then, the black that was before their eyes turned to blue to green, to red, and then to gold. And suddenly, there they were, standing in lovely bright sunshine in their own garden, near their own house. And everything was back to normal once again. No, our wings have gone, cried Mr. Greg. Oh, we're not tiny anymore, Mrs. Greg beamed. Philip and William began dancing with joy. Then, high above their heads, they heard the call of a wild duck. They all looked up and they saw the four birds, lovely against the blue sky, flying very close together, heading back to the lake in the woods. It must have been about half an hour later that I, myself, walked into the Greg's garden. I had come to see how things were going and I must admit, I was expecting the worst. At the gate, I stopped and stared. It was a strange sight. In one corner, Mr. Greg was smashing all three guns into tiny pieces with a huge hammer. In another corner, Mrs. Greg was placing beautiful flowers upon 16 tiny mounds of soil, which I learned later with the graves of the ducks that had been shot the day before. 
and in the middle of the yard stood Philip and William with a sack of their father's best barley besides them. They were surrounded by ducks, doves, pigeons, sparrows, robins, larks and many other kinds that I did not know. And the birds were eating the barley that the boys were scattering by the handful. Good morning, Mr Greg, I said. Mr Greg lowered his hammer and looked at me. My name's not Greg anymore. In honour of my feathered friends, I've changed it from Greg to Egg. And I'm Mrs Egg. What happened? I asked. They seemed to have gone completely dotty, all four of them. Philip and William then began to tell me the whole story. When they had finished, William said, Look! There's the nest. Can you see it? Right up at the top of the tree. There's where we slept last night. We built it all by ourselves, Mr Egg said proudly. Every stick of it. If you don't believe us, Mrs Egg said, just go into the house and take a look at the bathroom. It's a mess. <laughs> they filled the tub right up to the brim, Philip said. They must have been swimming around in it all night and feathers everywhere. Ducks like water, Mr Egg said. I'm glad they had a good time. <laughs> Just then, from somewhere over by the lake, there came a loud bang. Someone's shooting. Oh, that'll be Jim Cooper, him and his three children. They're shooting mad, those Coopers are, the whole family. Suddenly, I started to see red. Then I got very hot all over. Then the tip of my finger began tingling most terribly and I could feel the power going up and up inside me. I turned and started running towards the lake as fast as I could. Hey, what's up? Where are you going? To find the Coopers. But why? You wait and see. They'll be nesting in the trees tonight, every one of them. Thank <laughs> you.